Hello out there. That's a relief. I was really worried. I was really worried that uh, we were going to have an error. But not this time. Every time I load up YouTube and get ready for our live stream, almost every time, I worry about the cord coming undone, worry about my cord back here, um, seeing a squirrel and running after it, um, worry about my hair not looking. Uh, so, welcome to our final final live stream before midwinter break. We have uh, some weather related things I'm going to show you. I have three videos uh, lined up. And in addition to that, I'm going to uh, provide, as I've mentioned in the classroom, Google Classroom stream, I wanted to provide you with some sentence frames. The um, the thing about this book, one of the many things I like so much is how how well organized it is. And I I want you to realize you're not making an entire book, but you're making a slideshow. And even your slideshow, um, your slideshows can all take elements from these books. Like the thing, like this avalanche, right? The the way that they put the information here visually is done really well. So I want to help you with the um, with the way your slideshow looks now that hopefully you have lots of information in your book or in, um, hopefully it's in here. If it's not in here, maybe you have a bunch of loose sheets. Um, but looking at what we've, we've done a lot already, right? We've done starting on R34, we've done uh, boxes and bullet points. We've talked about the main idea and first, second, third, after that, we talked about comparing and contrasting. That's kind of what I wanted to focus on today. Uh, and we'll just, we'll just jump into the first video. The first thing I wanted to do was to show you, and close the blinds, I wanted to show you, oh, I'll play the video and close, close the blinds. I wanted to show you how we can use video to show the readers of your presentation the differences between types of weather. For example, is that frozen? Good. All right, what I wanted to show you first uh, was a, a classmate of yours. A classmate of yours is two, two or three are doing uh, tornadoes. And one of the things that's so interesting to me about tornadoes is they are similar to something called a water spout. And the water spout, is it here in your playlist? Reading workshop, okay. I add everything I'm, I'm showing you now. Here we go. Everything I'm about to show you is on our playlist under, um, here, I'll, I'll just show you. So if you go to our website, my, if you go to my website, if you go to the Google Classroom for R201, you're gonna um, see reading workshop. If you click on reading workshop at the bottom, there's the hail video, the science of lightning, and all you should know about water spouts. Now, this one's eight minutes. We're not going to watch all eight minutes, uh, but we are we are going to uh, start at the beginning. The interesting thing about this video, I will say this before we get started. I'm gonna tr the reason the camera's so close is I the, uh, there's no narration. So there's no one speaking. There's no one speaking um, the words that are on the bottom. So hopefully there's enough. Hopefully uh, we can. Whoops. Hopefully you can get close enough um, <laughs> to the screen. Don't don't hold the screen like too close to your face. Just hopefully you can read it. Blah blah blah. Um, this is all about water spouts. Uh, from a from a channel called You Should Know.
that said, in its common form, a uh, supercell formed over water, I think it said. Now, there's, there's a boat often weaker than its land counterparts, stronger versions. Oh, I missed it. Well, that looks really damaging. But because water spouts are over over water and not on land, water spouts don't cause as much. Yeah, they're usually weak. Looks like another a boat, right? And I did know this, um, a, it's called lake effect snow participation mass. I think that means that water spouts could form over a lake. Typically water spouts form over uh, an ocean or a bay. Ooh, okay, hold on. Boop. All right, ah, pause, why won't you pause? Ah, oh good, all right, so Remember, whenever you're uh, presenting info, and this is a presentation, this video is a presentation, water spouts have a five-part life cycle. Formation of a dark spot on the water surface, spiral pattern on the water surface, formation of a spray ring, de oh, here. development of a visible condensation funnel, and ultimately decay. Now. This, I can already tell this video was not written for fourth graders because the vocabulary that they're using is not a nine and 10 year old friendly vocabulary unless your vocabulary is up here, which that might be. So water spouts have a five part life cycle, pretty straightforward, right? Formation of a dark spot on the water surface, that part's pretty straightforward. A spiral pattern, hopefully someone knows what a spiral pattern is. Formation of a spray ring. Now, I, I have never heard of a spray ring. So this is the sort of thing, if you use phrases like, wake up, oh, for goodness sake. If you use vocabulary like, wait for it. What? <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> I forgot, I forgot that if it goes to sleep, the screen mirroring stops. So bear with me here. All right. So what I was saying was um, anytime, anytime you're using new vocabulary, make sure you do what this book does not do. See, this book... I, I'm curious why this book doesn't have any, see this paragraph? There's no words that are bolded. I am a big fan when you're presenting, let's see if this one does it. When you're, when you have your, um, when you're doing your slideshow, well, that's interesting. This doesn't have it either. Huh? So I'll see this is a book on earthquakes. See, they, they have great diagrams. They have, Oh, they have the Richter scale. This might be, those of you doing earthquakes, that's that's gonna be important. Um, ah, the first seismograph. So they, they do have diagrams, but they don't have a key vocabulary. And, and maybe that's, maybe I want you to do that and it's not necessary, but I think, well, this is a magazine. Maybe this is not a good, I mean, it's not a, it's a, it's a magazine uh, design, right? It's a magazine format. Does this one have bold, bold words? Huh. Well, now I'm not finding any, I'm not finding any of these in, uh, yeah, I'm not finding any bold, bold um, vocabulary words highlighted here. But this does, it is, this is an example of outstanding visuals. Oops, it's a little too bright. Woo wee! I'm gonna turn the lights up. Lights down in here. All right. So, really good. Uh, really good graphics. Nice uh, robot. Got a little robot volcano thing here. So I'll show you a little bit more of this. I have um, 
We have two more videos we're going to watch. All right. So this is a uh, this is another reason I'm going to um, stop right here for this video. The um, inclusion of this vocabulary term. Boop, I want that. I want that to be. And maybe did I, do I have a key? I only have a key vocab page yet. Unless it was, no, it's not that. Yeah, I think this will be the last, because on R42 and 43, so one of your classmates, one of your classmates did the uh, how animals are affected by storms, um, and then like an emergency, I, I they might have done an emergency kit too, or, or what steps to take in, in case of uh, this phenomenon. So I'm gonna do R44, and R44 I'm gonna write casualties. Casualties. And one thing we're going to have to do, whoopsie, one thing we're going to have to do with um, with these words that we use uh, are is to make sure we're using them correctly. So casualties. Casual. No, oh, don't. Don't wake up. Oh, man, I got to make sure this. Doesn't go to sleep. All right, stay awake. Uh, all right, let's go to the next video. Uh, this one is the science of lightning. Oh, right, the word was casualties. Um, casualties, and I wanna make sure I'm using the word correctly because casualties could be, a casualty could be an injury that causes someone to die, or a casualty could just be an injury. It depends on the on the term. Um, mm, okay, so casualties. We'll make sure we're defining that correctly. Uh, that's the only word I have so far. Um, all right, here we go. This is uh, the science of lightning. Look for the diagram with the plus and minus sign. The image is unmistakable. Lightning is one of the most incredible natural phenomena, and one that scientists are still learning. It's a common occurrence during summer when the heat of the day is broken by strokes of light. Worldwide, it's estimated lightning occurs 50 to 100 times a second. The greatest concentrations of lightning strikes are in Central Africa, the Himalayas, and South America. Lightning is often seen flashing between storm clouds in the earth. The bursts of light are pure electricity. Scientists don't fully agree on what actually causes the electrical charge to be dispersed, but it is generally thought that lightning often occurs within the downdrafts and updrafts of thunderstorms. Lighter particles moving toward the top of clouds become positively charged, while heavier particles heading toward the bottom become negatively charged. When they're positive and so the the oh just missed it. So the uh just, I'm going to back it up a bit. Just before this, uh, listen carefully. The uh, the phrase down, downdrafts and updrafts is what caught my ear. That's something I'm going to write uh, here. Right. Lighter particles moving toward the top of the clouds become positively charged, while heavier particles heading toward the lightning. Go back further. Down and updrafts of thunderstorms. Lighter particles moving toward the top of clouds become positively charged, while heavier particles heading toward the bottom become negatively charged. When the 
positive and negative charges were large enough, lightning is released between these regions. Most of the lightning takes place within the cloud, but some strikes the earth in bold flashes. I didn't know that. Most lightning strikes happen inside the cloud? Uh, who's it? Oh, and lightning can. Oh, so yeah, uh, casualties. So casualties could be um, casualties could be in other areas too. Like if there's a, if there's a, a airplane accident, car accident, um, something sad like that. Um, a casualty would mean someone someone was hurt or was killed. Um, so we have to make sure injuries and casualties. Which word are we going to use? Or, and the other word would be fatalities. That's definitely when someone passes away. Um, okay, I'm gonna grab a couple more vocabulary terms here, see if you can catch them. In these cases, the charge escapes the cloud, making a branching that reaches for the ground. The energy of the lightning strike contains hundreds of millions of volts and lasts only a fraction of a second. What seems to be a single flash is actually a series of return strokes of electrical energy reaching back up into the clouds. The path reaches temperatures of around 50,000 degrees Fahrenheit. This extreme heat creates the booming thunderclap as excessive pressure within the lightning path expands at supersonic rates on return strokes. In the U.S., lightning occurs most often in Florida, its hot, moist climate is perfect for creating thunderclouds, which produce lightning. But lightning is a deadly natural phenomenon, taking nearly 100 lives a year on average in the U.S., more than hurricanes or tornadoes. During an electrical storm... You hear that? That's right. They... So lightning storms. So when we talk about fatalities and dead, deadly natural phenomenon, I tend to think of things that are, that look really scary. Like to me, uh, to me, the thing that, that, that is scariest is probably a hurricane. I was in, I lived in Hawaii when we had a hurricane, a couple of hurricanes and the wind is so intense. It, it rattles the, uh, the house you live in trees like giant trees that i couldn't i couldn't move if i had a car and i rammed into it the tree is so big the wind though the wind knocked it down as if it were a popsicle stick um so when i think of of, of uh, things that could cause a lot of damage or death i think of something big like that but uh lightning strikes and there's even another weather phenomenon i think droughts i think droughts might cause more damage and more death than um, hurricanes, tornadoes. Um, but lightning strikes, the reason I caught my ear was according to this, uh, lightning causes more damage and fatalities than all the others. Experts warn that people should seek shelter inside a building or hardtop automobiles. And if caught in the open, avoid high ground and isolated trees. Lightning is a powerful force of nature and one to be conscious of. All right, so the last, yeah, the last one is gonna be uh, hail. We're gonna get to hail next. Um, I did learn something new too about isolated trees. Did anybody catch what they said, what the narrator said about avoiding high, if there's a, a lightning strike, a lightning storm, avoid high ground and isolated trees. What do you think that means? Like in this classroom that right now, I'm, I'm pretty isolated. Just me and, and this guy here, I'm isolated in here. So if I were a tree on a hill and you were seeing a lightning storm coming, don't go up the hill and don't go into that tree. If there's a bunch of trees, if there's a forest, Maybe, but don't, I don't think you want to go under the tallest tree. I think you want to go into the second tallest tree, I think. So all of my uh, uh, lightning experts out there, oh, my expert out there who's doing the, um, 
um, just weather in general and technology. You know who you are. 25? Yeah, number 25 out there. Um, giving some some recommendations about how to, I think that's what this one was. Like, see this first aid kit page on R43? I feel like um, it's like a first aid kit. It's how to survive. How to survive a blank, right? So how to survive a, a thunderstorm, hurricane, um, heat wave, hail, like, well, hailstorm, I guess. We'll see how bad the hailstorm could be, but, you know, how to survive these things, how to ride them out. Um, blah, blah, blah. All right. Next one up. Hail. Is that good or what? Man, I don't know about you, but the music was good. The graphics were good. Uh, what do you like about that? Oh, yeah. And uh, yeah, it's N O A, uh, but it's not after our classmate. It's uh, National Oceanic and Atmospheric Institute, I think it is. It's an acronym. Um, never go to the top of a tree. Maybe towns. Well, actually, Lena, um, I think what, what you'll find if you do a, a, a search on lightning rods is that when you when uh, buildings are, I'm going to freeze this, when buildings are uh, created, I'm pretty sure really, <coughs> excuse me, really tall buildings, all of them install a lightning rod of some kind. Um yeah, what'd you what'd you think about that? Um, what what'd you like about what'd you like about that video? I won't play it again because I find my I'm glad it's short because I was so interested in like the music and the info. Um, and do you notice too? Here's the other thing I'm noticing. You know, I'm having you do a slideshow, but think about how we were um, in how how moved we were with. The presentation of this it was like i said there were video there were close-up pictures of the hail that struck me there was a um they used they used uh rulers right like they had a, a, a hailstone and the person that had a ruler next to it they compared the um yeah did you see did you see what they compared the hailstone to they didn't just measure it. They used a ruler, but they used something else, which I thought was cool. What did you notice they used?
did you say baseball? Baseball and a grapefruit. So they compared, they compared natural phenomenon to something that people, like I, I've never seen hail that big. I've only seen hail the size of a marble, maybe. But to imagine, because I've seen lots of baseballs, <laughs> to imagine a hailstone that big or a grapefruit, a grapefruit is like this. Oof. All right, let's watch that one again. More, please. The image is unmistakable. Lightning is one of the most incredible what? natural phenomena. That was last time. I want the next one. Here we go. Precipitation. funny oh this is live tv folks oh we gotta roll with it Ow. um so the dual dual polarization never heard of that before notice the difference between frozen precipitation frozen rain frozen rain is different than heavy rain and heavy rain is different than hail and they have developed i didn't know this they've developed uh, this dual polarization can detect the difference between this so that they can then send out uh, warnings to people in the path and say here, um, frozen precipitation, that might cause um, icy roads where cars should stay off the roads because the frozen precipitation like lands and freezes on impact and then the, the car tires, um, well, skid out. Heavy rain would cause floods and then the hail, of course, causes its own problem, problems and damage. Um, but again, uh, forecasters is important. Um, dual, dual polarization I got. Um, so I'm going to add forecasters. I think you may have heard these words or read. Um, precipitation updraft encounters recovered diameter serious. It's not that. Serious damage I was going to write down. I mean serious. Detection, dual polarization, and forecasters. Those are all really good vocab words. Oh, they did. Yeah, good point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Edmund, the um, the uh, the sides of the building. Did you see the windshield? Yeah, rest in peace windshield. It's time to get a new windshield. Oh, so that's the important, like you saw at one point, the car drove into the garage. If people know a hailstorm's coming, they can uh, put their vehicle underneath um, some kind of overhang, a tree, whatever, to protect it. Uh, hmm. So those of you who like this, the NO, NOAA, National Oceanic and Atmospheric Association, I think, um, dot gov. So the, this, this seems to me, this seems like a really uh, trustworthy source. It's not, you know, 
uh, darn dogs all about weather dot gov. You know, I heard that. That's nothing personal. Um, right. So go to if you're interested, go to nssl dot noaa dot gov. They may have no more videos like this. Uh, my uh, my student out there, my coworker. Um, number three. Number three, uh, go ahead and, and find this link is on my, or this video is on the reading playlist. You can embed this video in your uh, slideshow. I think using, I don't think I want every single slide to have a video, but you could easily have every, every third slide could have a video. So if you have three slides, put a video. Six slides, two videos. Nine slides, three videos, et cetera. Fractions are everywhere. Um, so what did I say? N, I want to put this down. N, S, S, L. Oh, the other thing that's um, that makes me feel like this is trustworthy, uh, there's a university. It's affiliated with the University, university of Nebraska, it says. Um, none of the, and sometimes when you list the contributors, they might have a, a title like doctor, PhD, uh, whatever. But may, maybe these people have their degrees. They're just not listed here. Um, how are we doing on time? Oh my, I've won over. Okay, so that's that. I'm gonna write this down. Uh, I'll see almost all of you in a little bit after lunch for sure. So hope you're doing well. Uh, that was fun. Um, hope you learned something and were inspired to improve your presentation, your slideshow presentation for extreme weather. Darn dogs coming for the, the one o'clock party. So he has nothing to say right now, do you? Not yet. Not yet. All right. Aloha, everybody. Au revoir.